Hello, it is Throwback Thursday, July 23rd, 2020. Steve Cypress coming to you a little later than usual. We'll just get off the phone with a long, fun, fantastic call with one of my favorite clients. They're all my favorites, but uh, what a great call. We had a lot of fun and it kept going uh, a lot longer than expected. But here we are, my daily video that I record every day for almost three and a half years now at facebook.com slash small biz help b-i-z and if you go to facebook my personal page you might be familiar with this photo not this particular one this is an enlarged version there it is i had this blown up this photo how do i get this not showing up cockeyed there we go uh this is when i first signed up onto facebook back in I don't know, 2008 or so, uh, I put this on as my Facebook profile photo, that's me, and our beloved, rambunctious, crazy Cocker Spaniel, Emmanuel, who uh, passed away a little over four years ago, uh, about eight months after we moved from Chicago, where he lived his whole life, to here in Arizona. And he was a fairly old man doggy boy by then, and he was like, Where's all the grass? And what's up with the heat? Uh, and uh, he uh, was not very happy being here. He missed his ponds and hunting and checking out frogs and bunnies and whatever the heck, uh, you know, just grass that he would love up north. But anyway, uh, he left us a few years ago and uh, we think about him all the time. We still love our doggy boy. And uh, a couple of days ago, my beautiful wife, Michelle, sends me on the Facebook uh, message thing, uh, she sends me a video of us walking the doggy, and then another video of playing with the doggy or something. And I was like, uh, honey, what's with the, what's with these old videos of us walking the doggy? And he's like, she's like, don't you know, today's the fourth year anniversary of when he passed away. And now here I am, I set up this light and I just remembered I forgot to turn it on. So let's see if I can turn this thing on, there it is. There you go. And, uh, and so, that was kind of silly, huh? Uh, I think you get the, uh, the uh, what do they call it? The uh, skeleton, the uh, uh, shadowing effect when you have the light coming straight down and the person looks like a skeleton. So now I have this light coming straight on. Maybe it looks a little better. Although since it's me, <laughs> all bets are off. I don't think anything is going to make me look better. Uh, but hopefully you're not here for my looks, otherwise uh, you wouldn't be here. Hopefully you're here for the business information. And it's Throwback Thursday, I'm telling a little story about our doggy from four years ago. And then uh, I was like, oh, you know, who knew? That's the anniversary, okay. And then uh, a little bit later that afternoon, my beautiful wife Michelle brings this in to my office. This is like the urn with his remains, we're told. We certainly paid a couple hundred bucks for it, I think. And, uh, and I was like, oh, okay. I don't know if you can see the date on there. There it was, July, well, you can't see the year, July 21st, 2016. So now a little over four years ago, she brought this into my office and I was like, honey, you know, you like that thing. It's, you know, wherever she is all the time. And uh, she was like, yeah, well, he wants to be with you for a little while. And I'm like, oh, okay. So in case you can't tell, my beautiful wife, Michelle, still has not come anywhere near close to getting over the fact that our beloved, rambunctious, crazy Cocker Spaniel Emmanuel is no longer with us. And uh, that's the business lesson of the day, okay? When you are communicating with a passionate, rabidly passionate audience, like dog lovers, cat lovers, uh, people who love whatever their hobby is, but let's just talk about dog people, dog lovers. Well, not only, of course, while he was alive, did we absolutely love our doggy, uh, but we showed that with our pocketbook at all times. I remember when we first, the day we rescued him from the shelter, which of course was named the Animal House Shelter, named after the greatest movie of all time. So I was like, it's fate. I heard about this thing called the Animal House Shelter. We've been talking about getting a doggy. It was a week before my beautiful wife Michelle's birthday. And I was like, of course, our doggy has to be at the Animal House Shelter, at the greatest movie of all time shelter. And we went over there and sure enough, we met our beloved 
rambunctious, absolutely crazy when we got them, full of energy, uh, Cocker Spaniel Emanuel. And I remember they had us fill out this form, you know, are you the right people to adopt him? You know, will you take care of him? And will you feed him? And whatever it was. And there was a line on the form. It was one item, something about how much do you estimate, how much money per year do you estimate you will spend on the health care of the dog? And we were like, I don't know. Didn't think about it. I mean, I had dogs as a kid, but I never was responsible for, and so did my beautiful wife, Michelle, but neither one of us, we were kids. We were not responsible for the visits to the vet and whatever else would come up. And I think, I remember we put down like 300 bucks. I'm like, I don't know, 300 bucks. You know, I had some vets as clients. I've had clients in over 165 different industries. And I'm like, you know, it can be like 50, 60 bucks for a visit to get a shot. It can be a hundred bucks if something. So let's say three times a year, a hundred bucks, 300 bucks. Uh, we put that down there. <laughs> Maybe you're laughing at me as hard as I'm laughing at myself. Like uh, it was closer to 300 bucks a day, uh, the upkeep on this doggy. And uh, I mean, right away within the first few months we had him, he needed a back surgery. Wherever he had been previously and whatever he had done, there were some issues. And uh, he was in so much pain and we took him into the vet and they did the x-rays and they were like, he needs back surgery. It's four grand. And that's when I said the line, you should never say to your spouse if they are in love with your pet. I was like, honey, four grand? You know, we can get like, I think we, we gave a donation of $300 to the animal house shelter to get the dog. And I'm like, we could get like 10 more doggies for that. Oh, never say such a ridiculous thing. That did not go over well. And uh, out came the, the check for the four grand and the, uh, the back surgery. Uh, but then there was, you know, he's a Cocker Spaniel with the long floppy ears. If you know anything about Cocker Spaniels or probably dogs like him, they get a lot of ear infections because they got those floppers going down over the ears and, you know, they're not open to the fresh air or whatever. And, you know, they were like, oh, he's going to have ear issues. Eventually he went deaf. Uh, Looked up at us a lot more when he was deaf, but, uh, you know, uh, always had these ear issues. So was always getting lots of medicine and, and this and that and, I don't know, pills and drugs and things to put in his food and who knows, whatever. And then, of course, we had to get him the greatest food to mankind. I swear he ate better than me a lot of the times. I mean, it was the freshest food from the Whole Foods. You know, <laughs> it was like, he... He was pretty much right. He thought it was people food. It's coming out of the refrigerator now. And he was like, wow, I'm getting people food. But anyway, the point is, when you can address a passionate, rabid audience, or you can take people if you sell what people think is a commodity, plumbing, roofing, something like that, but put out the messaging that gets people passionately involved. So for any kind of home contracting type of thing like that, the, the, the key is, and I've talked about this a lot, and so it's a, it's a whole topic for another day, but you pretty much turn any issue into a health issue, right? So people are no longer like, well, I can put up a little dripping of the roof. I don't need to fix it yet, spend lots of money. Uh, but oh, then you inform them and educate them and let them know that, yeah, but see, it's not just a little dripping. Those drips come in and that can lead to mold and that can infect your whole family and your kids are sick and your dog dies and you're missing days of work and you have headaches and this and that. And then it's going to cost tons of money to, you know, uh, get rid of the mold and then redo everything and pull out all the drywall. Oh, ah, becomes a whole health issue. Suddenly it's passionate. We have to get that thing fixed right away, right? So the key is either to address an already passionate, rabid audience, like a lot of dog lovers who will get the dog and then... We need the best dog food. We need the best veterinary care. Uh, we don't even think of, uh, of, of saying goodbye to our doggy just because he needs a $4,000 back surgery. Like we put out the four grand plus all the follow-up care and everything else. And it's not even a thought because we love our doggy boy. And even four years and now two days after he's gone, we still love, we're told, 
you know, I don't know, I've never done any DNA check or whatever, but we're told these are the remains of our cremated doggy boy. And I have never changed the profile photo on my Facebook page, which as I showed at the beginning, this is the blown up version. So you'll see that if you ever go to my personal Facebook page. And uh, I think we'll always love our doggy boy. And I like the fact I think we'll never get over him. Maybe we'll get another dog someday, but we're enjoying our independence. Not right now for the last four months where everyone's in jail, uh, self-quarantine, whatever you want to call it. it. You know, even if you could go anywhere, where's there to go? You know, sports, bars, clubs, events, concerts, whatever. You know, you can't do anything. We're in, uh, and of course, since it's election season, we're in extended jail uh, to kill the economy and get rid of the president and all that kind of stuff is happening. So anyway, I digress. This would be the time to have a doggy. I think all the adoptions at all the shelters are at record highs and people getting pets and having the companionship uh, during these times. But pick uh, a, a, a niche, an industry, a field, an audience that is already absolutely rabid and passionate about a topic they will buy stuff. Golf fans, fans of the Lord of the Rings, Star Wars collectors, they will spend ridiculous amounts of money on stuff uh, because they're passionate and they are irrationally passionate about things, right? Uh, and if you don't, you have a field that you're already in and you don't want to truly be an entrepreneur and branch into a new field, you just want to really be a business owner and have the phone ringing and go to work and make some money, but not have to work for someone else, that's the difference uh, between a business owner and an entrepreneur who's always looking to add new streams of income and put things together in a new way and make more money and take advantage of more opportunity. But even if you're just a business owner running your business, and again, you don't have a business with a naturally passionate group of people, find what they are passionate about and tie your product or service to that. You will reap the rewards just like everybody selling all kinds of food, toys, anything else, I don't even remember now, that had to do with doggies because only the very best for our doggy. So that's it for Throwback Thursday, four years and two days anniversary of uh, the passing away of our beloved, rambunctious, crazy Cocker Spaniel, Emmanuel. And that'll do it for today. Thanks everyone here live, watch on the replay. I will be back tomorrow with another part in our multi-part series on the classic, fantastic book, The Psychology of Winning by Dr. Dennis Waitley. So I hope you join me then on Foundation Friday over and out for tonight. Bye-bye.